Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about cyber and application security interview questions. In this video, we're going to discuss about the top 10 OWASP vulnerability. Actually, I'm splitting this session into two parts. So in the first part, I'm going to cover the first four vulnerability, how it basically asks and what can be the ideal answer. And in the next video, I'm going to discuss about the second part. If you're new to my channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. So without wasting your time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. Okay, so first question. Can you tell me more about broken access control? See, if you're going for any kind of an application security jobs, so they mostly ask the questions from the OWASP top 10 and one of the first vulnerability is basically called as a broken access control. So what is broken access control? Broken access control is basically a vulnerability in the application by which the user can able to access the resources for which he does not have a permission. So I'm a user, okay? For me, I don't have access to some interface. Example like, uh, let's take an example. I have a website here. So I have a website. Okay, so I type HTTP web.com login.php. So what happened is as a user, I can see the login page. Now instead of that, I type admin dot config okay i type admin configuration and i hit enter so i send the request to website if website is basically vulnerable for broken access control it redirect me with the information about the page of admin configuration so as i said i'm trying to access those files those information for which i don't have a permission why because of the weak access control configured on the server so when user access a resource or take an action they are not allowed to do this is the weakness in the system access control so this is the same example they have given https example.com slash app slash account info act not my account so here what happened instead of account i will basically add name called mara or i will say zara and then i hit enter so by default i should not have access to that but if i'm able to access that for which i don't have a permission then there is a flaw in the application level now first of all we need to understand how the flaw works or what are the flaws we have in the applications okay so how it works normally talking about the web server it has a three layers so this is my web server okay so we have a three layers one is called as a application layer where my web server is there iis or apache then we have a business logic layer and then we have a OS and then we connect it with the database. So normally what happened as a user, if I try to access as a user, I try to access, I send the request for a website. They will basically provide me a page. So suppose this is the page we have. So it asking for the username password. So when I enter username and password, that information sent to the IIS or Apache. That information then sent to business logic layer. And this is the basically the called as an interpreter. This is a layer which basically convert into the language which database can understand. So actually we're trying to discover the vulnerability in this layer. So by exploiting this vulnerability on this layer, we can able to penetrate into the OS or we can able to further access to the database. So most of the vulnerabilities you can find in this area or this area. There are very limited vulnerabilities we have found in the database. Might be my OS is secure, but the application which is installed on the OS, it's not secure like .NET, PHP, and Java. So there is a possibility attacker can able to exploit that. And through that, they're trying to gain access to the OS. Okay, so that is how things works. So in this section, you can see it is clearly mentioned. I'm just changing the account number to something else and I hit enter. If there is a flaw in the business logic layer, I'm able to access the details for which I don't have a permission. So common access control vulnerability include the violation of principle of least privilege. It mean I log in with the user account, but I took over the privilege of admin account. 
or modify the url and permitting view or editing someone else account as i said i am a, i am an employee i am working in one company when i log in i can see my salary details i just modify the url to prep to current and i hit enter and that information sent to the server if server is vulnerable for the broken access control i can able to see the salary details of the other person so how to prevent first of all we need to disable the web server directory listing so by this way i cannot able to access those drives for which i don't have a permission second is implement the deny access default function it mean if you're trying to access some files which is not part of that list approved list automatically you get a redirect to home page or you get a deny access and third on a regular basis do the continuous assessment to make sure your applications are basically compliance with the organization baseline and all that along with that do the proper input validations on the server and client end by which you can able to prevent such kind of an attacks so if you give such kind of a statements and all that i'm sure you will be get a definitely job in that particular vertical because by giving a more and more technical things in detail the interview will be more happy okay so let's move to the next interview question okay so let's move to the next interview question can you tell me more about injection which is a second vulnerability of ovasp now as i said i already draw the scenario injection is all about injecting the queries if you injecting the sql statement then it is a sql injection if you injecting a os command it is a os injection if you injecting a file then it is a file injection so let's take an example this is my website okay so this is my website and uh, i have a user here so user open the browser okay you open the browser and the browser he basically enter http gmail.com http or gmail.com now website is basically provide the response now as i said website basically has a three layers application layer business logic layer os and or are basically connected with the database in the back end so now what happen when the user get a pop up so in so this is basically my input pages okay where the user inputs will be added so attacker instead of adding a uh, legitimate input it will add some kind of a malicious query like he will add the select star command or they will enter the dir command which is used for running a command interpreter like normally what happen when you open the cmd and you type the ip config and all that that kind of a information you have entered here if this input is vulnerable for the input validation it mean without verifying process then it is basically major risk for the site example like i enter some malicious query and then the information sent to the web server now web server basically have a command interpreter which is called as a business logic layer now when business logic layer receive the value without verifying the value it basically process now it can lead to anything example the command we have enter called dir command which is used to find the directory if business logic layer when it receive the value without verifying it process it goes to the os so os thought someone has requested for the directory information so website will be reply back with the directory details so this is called as a lack of input validation even without verifying we have process the input and when i say we have a proper input validation whenever you enter any kind of a malicious query or anything query which is against the compliance it generate a error invalid value right so here it doesn't generate the invalid value it it accept it process and it basically process in a very different manner so that is a concern we have i'm sure this point is clear so this is called as a input validation flaw which is happen through the injection flaw so injection flaw is a vulnerability which exploit the further vulnerability of the input validation by which they trying to perform some activity for which they don't have a permission as i said uh, we have a login page of the website it's a common user login page so first of all i discover the admin login page so admin login page also ask for the username and password so instead of entering the admin username password we enter some true statement like sql star statements and all that if the website is vulnerable for the injection flaw or input validation issues it will able to accept all the queries for which we don't have a permission so that is how it works okay so this is basically called as a injection flaw so it is a type of attack where the attacker supplies untrusted input to a program and this input get processed by the interpreter which is called business logic layer as a part of a command or query so question is sometime interviewer ask in what condition the application is vulnerable 
so it is vulnerable when input data is not validated so if you able to answer this good job because most of the questions are basically around the injection flow so and the very common question they will start is what is the reason of application accept these queries because the input data is not been validated it is same like you know you ask me prab one plus one so i said three not without processing anything i just said three it should be one plus one two right or you have a, i am a maths teacher and you asking me something about the history so i immediately said that i cannot tell you this because i don't expertise in that so because of input validation i was able to react to the negative queries but i am in a different sense you ask me and i give the different outcome output then it can give a negative impression in the student mind so that is how you can understand the input data validation so here the application is vulnerable because input data is not been validated so we have a different type of injection one is called command injection where we entering the os command as i said dir cmd and all that and by which we trying to find the complete details about the target second is sql injection where we injecting a sql queries and third is basically called as a code injection where we injecting a malicious code so question is how to prevent so the prevention part is input validation is there that you can apply use positive server input validation it mean whatever you enter it went to server and server is going to verify and validate that third escape the special characters because these are basically promoting the malicious queries and all that so by this way you can able to prevent the attack let's move to the next interview question thank you okay so next question is can you tell me more about insecure design it is again a vulnerability so when you talking about insecure design first of all it is not something is a vulnerability okay it is all about you don't give much attention and because of some mistakes because of your mistake or developer mistake the application is vulnerable for an attack we writing a code but we haven't verify we keeping a data for testing but we don't sanitize we haven't defined the proper control in place and we just develop the application so lack of effective security control in the design phase often result in the application being susceptible to many weaknesses which is collectively known as a insecure design vulnerability okay so i'm sure you have noticed right sometime that some pages are left with some configuration details the tester has not verified so proper security controls and all that so insecure design is not it's not a technical flaw it's not it's not because of technical flaw it's all about it's all about the lack of security planning so sometime interview or play with your mind so they ask you insecure design happen because of what reasons so insecure design is not a technical issue it's all about the planning issue that's why we always say security should be introduced as early as possible in the sdlc it must start from the initiation phase okay so insecure design comprise a variety of risk that are arise from neglecting design and architectural best practice beginning with the planning phase and continuing through the implementation phase so when designing application developers are recommend to use a secure design patterns diligently plan threat modeling okay reference architecture to keep the application free of security gaps let's take example so i am running a hotel chain which allow the group of booking discounts okay so i am running a website okay which basically allow lot of booking okay booking discounts and all that and maximum uh, on a one time 10 people can able to book the things okay before requiring a deposit and all that so what happen is attacker discover the vulnerability he basically perform the threat modeling and identify the complete data flow process how the application works and what he did he changed from 10 to 100 okay so that is how he tried to modify the values and it done successfully understood another example we have a maximum of 15 attendees before requiring a deposit so attacker could threat model this flow and test if they could book 600 seats and all cinema at once in a few requests which causing a massive loss of income so this is the example of the insecure design we have so what is a countermeasure so countermeasure is use a threat modeling in the design phase whenever you agree with the customer on the requirement design the entire data flow diagram and see what are the possible threats we have so during the design phase we identify threats so during a development we can respect those threats and according to that we develop the code and second is limit the resource consumptions so these are the two countermeasures we have that we can use for the insecure design i i repeat again insecure design is not because of the technical flaw it's all about the planning 
where the developer failed to review the code properly, failed to add the proper security during a development and that lead to the application in trouble. Okay, let's move to the next question. Thank you. Okay, so next is called, can you tell me about OWASP top 10 security misconfiguration? So there is a difference in secure design and security configuration both are different. In the insecure design, we haven't adopted the security as a principle. Here, we might adopt the security principle, but we haven't closed it properly. Okay, example like we have created some kind of a sample page, which reveals some configuration, but we haven't disabled that. So we adopt the security practice, but the pages were still enabled. Understood. So it is more about the implementation or some negligence. So security misconfiguration can happen at any level. Okay, it can be happen on the application level, it can be happen on the network level, it can be happen on the platform and all that. Sometime when we're trying to browse a website, we can able to see the complete details about the OS applications and all that. Not because of the uh, application issue, but might be because of the OS issue. So security misconfiguration means you, you have a security but not configure properly. Let's take an example. We have a firewall. In the firewall, we have not disabled the rule called save for deny or uh, the rule is called as a deny default. Okay, so what happened? All the traffic is passed through the firewall. So we have a security configuration, but we have not properly configured. So here, it's all about the lack of security or security is not been conf configured properly. Like some banners, pages are already enabled. We haven't disabled that. Some ports are still open. So they can be used to perform an attack. So application might be vulnerable if the application is missing the appropriate security hardening unnecessary features are enabled and installed or default accounts and password are still enabled and unchanged. So how to prevent, repeat the hardening process. Once you done the development, do the proper hardening again, assessment and see if any gap is there. Any kind of a changes in the system need to go through a change management process. Test the application in a separate environment. If it working effectively, only roll out the application in the production environment. Make sure you should reduce the attack surface by running with a minimum platform with minimum function because more function you add, more invitation you're giving to the attackers. So this is how you can able to reduce the security misconfiguration and segment the application architecture from other things. So if tomorrow application compromise also, it maximum, it has a minimum impact. So do let me know how do you find these videos and let me know shall I make more videos on the application security. So this is all from my side. My name is Prabhnayar. For more information, do watch my next video. Thank you. Bye.